inside the East Iceland paper because uh, uh, we have very much concerns for the young people using mobile phone. So in your conclusions I read that there, there might be a risk of cognitive dysfunctions, which is the state of the art of the studies. Well, uh, I'm uh, working in uh, the electromagnetic biology laboratory in Athens University. Uh, head of which is uh, my professor Lucas Margaritis. Uh, we are doing research on uh, electromagnetic field effects emitted from mobile phones, wireless decked phones, as well as uh, other sources as uh, Wi-Fi, Bluetooth, a microwave oven and uh, baby monitor, baby s surveillance. Uh, until now we have done research on mice, on uh, insects, and uh, recently on lizards and uh, rabbits. We have found effects on uh, mice specifically, on their spatial memory. They had, uh, in our experiments, that we used the Morris water maze. I will show it later in my presentation. Uh, we concluded that mice that had um, only been uh, exposed to a cell phone radiation for just uh, four days, two hours per day, they showed deficits in uh, learning information, uh, more specifically here to find that platform in the water and then to remember where the platform was. And uh, we, show, we saw some uh, uh, deficits also in their spatial memory, in the consolidation and uh, retrieval of the information that they have learned. Uh, in this task, uh, this task is controlled by the hippocampus so we may have deficits in the hippocampal area in a hi histological uh, level, but we have to check it in our next steps. Uh, this was uh, one part of our work and uh, we have done also work uh, with uh, mobile phone and wireless decked uh, base. And we saw again deficits in the recognition memory. The recognition memory is uh, if somebody, if uh, a person can remember and distinguish some things that uh, has seen before. The spatial memory is to remember where you have been. For example, I have been in a conference uh, some years ago and uh, a person that uh, was in a restaurant and had a Wi-Fi next to it couldn't remember uh, the, how he came from uh, another place, for example, to, have to remember the way to go back because there was an electromagnetic field radiation close to it. In uh, our uh, article uh, that we have written with Professor Margaritis in the ESIMS monograph, uh, we gather all the research that has been done so far on uh, cognitive function. There are many reports that uh, this kind of radiation, the microwaves, affect uh, spatial memory, reference memory, working memory by distinguished uh, scientists. Uh, among them is uh, Professor Lai from uh, the United States, uh, Lai Salford and Greta Nigby for uh, Lund, Sweden, Narayanan and other studies that they have shown deficits. Of course there are, uh, there is the other side, there are also studies that uh, show no effect so the field is still open and more research is, uh, has to be done in order to uh, find uh, the real conditions that provoke an effect uh, or not. Uh, we are persuaded that there is a problem, so we have to uh, follow the precautionary principle, especially for uh, uh, people that are sensitive, as are pregnant women, children, that their brain is still in construction and uh, people that uh, are occupied with uh, electromagnetic fields in their work and uh, electro hypersensitive people that they have uh, many symptoms as uh, headaches, uh, fatigue, sleep disturbance, memory deficit. So do you think that this condition tumors. is a physical condition because you know that the official position of the uh, World Health Organization says that it's it may be probably psychological condition. 
Well, my personal opinion, and, uh, which is in agreement with other scientists as well, is uh, that uh, uh, the mobile phones, the wireless phones, and all of these sources provoke some problems, but it may, it's, uh, if its impact is uh, strong or not, it may be related to each person, to the uh, characteristics that uh, each person has. But uh, in a last article in the Seleton uh, resolution that we wrote with uh, Professor Ule Johansson, uh, Lucas Margaritis in this age from uh, the United States, Elihu Richter and uh, Yuri Grigoriev from Russia, and Darren's uh, others, we concluded that the safety limits have to be reduced and the government should be convinced because there is still research that shows effect. We don't have to wait until uh, we have uh, all people with uh, brain tumors, for example. We don't say to ban the technology, the wireless technology, it's in our life, but uh, we have to be careful and uh, use the, all these devices in a correct way, to keep a safe distance, to use a hands-free or a Bluetooth, to use, um, a, for example, uh, some cases that they protect us for the mobile phones, and uh, ban advertisement, for example, to children that they are that they more um, uh, the users that will have uh, the long time uh, of exposure. Uh, yes, exposure. Mm -hmm. Is it possible that these changes on the brain can produce any kind of addiction, the exposure to mobile phones? Because I was particularly interested in some studies that were telling that the more heavy users were less affected on the cognitive uh, uh, consequences to the exposure. To adapt themselves, yes. you mean? Yes, yes. Well, uh, uh, this field is open. Uh, we have seen, for example, in our results that uh, we had a stress effect with uh, an increase in the corticosteroid levels that mice, for example, seem to adapt after some time. But you cannot say for sure because the organism is a uh, system that has uh, many functions. We can see maybe an adaptation to one function and uh, uh, others to be affected. We cannot say that for sure. I uh, there is uh, research that has to be done and I believe that uh, since there are many effects, uh, we have to be very careful. I thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you.